Good boy, Tucker. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Hey, hey. Welcome. Work smarter where you want. Consistency is key. And remember, if it's not in Red Tail, it never happened. This is learning at its most fun. All righty. Good afternoon or morning, depending on where you are at. My name is Jonathan Maddock, and we are here for another uh, Thursday webinar. We have a very unique opportunity today. Uh, we are going to open it up for a uh, Ask a Trainer. Uh, we're going to be doing these quarterly, so if, uh, if you have questions you know, along the way and you don't want to necessarily schedule a whole training, you can always attend these, and we'll go ahead and answer them. Um, I'm Haley Mandrip. I'm another trainer here at Redtail, and I just wanted to let everybody know about the training resources that we have. So um, you have a couple different options when it comes to training in Redtail. Uh, us as trainers, we're always available to you, um, but one of the options is, of course, calling into our support team. And actually, when you call in, you have the option to go ahead and, and request a one-on-one -on -one training with a trainer. So we'll set aside an hour session time with you, go over kind of what your goals are for the database, and then have a training with you or your entire team on, on via WebEx to see kind of what you'd want us to do and, and what you're looking forward to do within the system, and we can help with that. So that's an option free of charge. There's no cost yeah. to that, to have that one-on-one -on -one session. And then we also, if you're near any of our locations, Red Tail is in Sacramento, California or Chandler, Arizona. So we offer one hour on-site, or sorry, two hour on-site sessions at no cost at those facilities too. So you can come on out and visit, uh, visit us here. I forgot to introduce Malcolm. <laughs> so this is Red Tail Malcolm or Malcolm. He was actually adopted through a program that Red Tail partners with. So he's here every day, and you can come visit us and our dogs and get some CRM training. That's right. Um, also, we are, just so everybody's aware, um, Haley and I are actually part of the strategy track uh, for the uh, Red Tail University. So if you're not familiar with Red Tail University, um, it's probably coming to a city near you. Uh, we were in Dallas yesterday, so we did a two-day two, um, two day RTU out there. Um, but we're going to be heading out. We think we have another nine, nine around, around the United States. Um, so you can always go to redtailuniversity.com and take a look at the schedule there. Um, Haley and I focus on the strategy track, uh, which is really geared towards um, larger offices or um, you know advisors who have a staff or uh, operations people. So we kind of really jump into kind of the why you are doing what you're doing in the in the um, in the CRM. So we have a lot of input from different users and things like that. So hopefully that will help you um, when kind of deciding um, you know. Who to talk with or whatever that may be. So that is the introduction. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And we um, got a couple questions already, some good ones. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, first question is, um, uh, let's see here. We have there with uh, Centaris Financial. We are new to Redtail, which welcome. Um, and they are looking to see if we integrate with uh, Pershing's uh, Next X360. NetX360, yeah. So we do integrate with Pershing NetX360. Um, what's really great is for any of our integrations, you can go to the question mark in the top right-hand corner of the CRM and then go to the Redtail Help Desk. So this is where we have I don't know, hundreds of articles and videos on the CRM. And we're just going to utilize that search bar up in the top right-hand corner and just type in Pershing. So P E R S D. Yep, there we go. Pershing, and then we're going to click Enter on our keyboard, and it's going to search our whole help desk. And you'll see we got one item here, Pershing NetX 360. Now this article is going to take you through all the aspects of the integration, or all the aspects of the integration that we have information on. And this one actually is unique in that you first need to contact your Pershing account manager, um, but you can go ahead and follow these steps to get the integration setup information, and that goes for all of our integrations. It, it really does, yeah. So if you are ever, you ever have questions about whether or not we integrate with something, the help desk should always be your first option. Um, that search bar right there. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you head over, if you're just curious about certain integrations that we may or may not have um, outside, maybe you're thinking, hey, I'd like to go ahead and take a look at a marketing, a marketing software or a voice dictation, or um, I'm thinking, looking at different planning tools. What you can actually do is you can go into Project Tailwag from the help desk, and if you scroll down once you're in, you're actually going to see a whole um, section that says integrations. If you by clicking into this um, this article, you're going to see we've gone ahead and listed out every single integration that we have an article for. 
but we've also made it a little bit easier by kind of breaking them up into the different types. So we have account aggregators and custodians, you know, we have those form fillers um, and then marketing tools. So definitely if you have questions about integrations, always check the help desk. And then obviously, you know, we have, uh, you know, you can always reach out to us via phone or email. So hopefully that helped you there. Um, Rose, let's go ahead and move on. Um, let's see here. Uh, save and clone feature confuses me. For instance, when I update an activity and then I have to also follow up later in the calendar and need to move the activity, but I also have, have to save and complete for the time accounting. Okay. Um, how many times do I have to save and clone and the steps to do this type of action? I love this type of action. So yeah. I, I save and clone my activities all day long. I feel like. Um, so let's just start with a task that we have on our calendar. Sure. <clears throat> what have we got up here? We've got call Pepper. So let's say I have to call Pepper. I'm going to do a follow-up with Pepper as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is access my, my original activity. And then I'm going to scroll down to the actions on the right-hand side and select save and clone. Now what this is going to do, and I liked how you yeah. describe it actually, is it takes the activity and then it puts the clone right on top of that activity. So now you're on the cloned activity and we would take this date and go ahead and move it out to, I'd say next week I'll call sure. Pepper. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, she, you know, Tuesday, that's great. Then what I'm gonna do is we're still in that cloned activity. We're gonna click save activity down here and this will actually bump us back to the original. So the clone is off scheduled to next week. That's great, it's all hunky dory. And now we've got the original activity that I can go ahead and update with the call information that I talked to Pepper about today. Maybe she wasn't available, but I want to account for my time. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to save and complete in the bottom right-hand corner under those same actions. And now that's going to save date, time, and user stamp this activity as a note. And it's going to show that that time on my calendar was accounted for. I was doing something for that time but I still have the follow-up for a week in the future to go ahead and reach back out again. Yeah, exactly. I really do like that on, on top because for me, it was a visual thing. It's, it's going to sit right on top. Um, this is also really helpful if you're doing, um, if you're doing canceled appointments, this is a really big one for tracking canceled appointments um, because if you're using that, the save and clone um, and love what you said about kind of, you did your due diligence, right? I want to go ahead and document that I did some sort of task. And even if you're an admin, right? Like, hey, I'm putting in the time in, right? I don't want that to be noted. However, they were the ones that canceled. So having maybe a, a category, something like canceled, no show, rescheduled, something like that, that allows you to then adjust the category you save and clone. And then I'm saving the original one or vice versa. And then that way you're, you're having two activities um, and you're not losing any of that data. So Definitely a good way to, to uh, make sure that you're tracking the different activities. It's a great question. Um, let's see here. I love this next question. So I'm having trouble with workflows. <laughs> What's my best plan of attack, Jonathan? Ah, uh, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, first and foremost, um, this is a shameless plug, um, but next month, all of April is going to be like workflow series month. So we're going to be really deep diving into the, the workflow series. So we're going to be taking a look at um, conceptualizing, right? Really jumping into, hey, what am I trying to do, right? How, do, how does it function? What is a target date? What is a step? What is a task? Um, and we're going to go ahead and break that down. Um, and then we're going to go into something more like building a workflow. So we're going to take a lot of time, a good 45 minutes worth of breaking and, and building a, a workflow from start to finish. Um, and then finally, we'll go into application and then um, maybe touch on what I would consider to be the cherry on top of your workflow Sunday, that is automations. So we'll talk, talk about the enhancements and automations on the last week. And I believe you're actually going to be the one to be doing that. I am. So <laughs> join me then. But in the meantime, you yeah. know, if you're looking to just hammer out those videos right now, there are recorded uh, versions of those videos available. We're going to go to that question mark again. So anytime you have a question, we really like to cater to your learning style. And in this case, you're going to go under those training sessions that Jonathan mentioned previously. And there's a working willfully <laughs> with workflows. <sighs> We made it easy on you. <laughs> yeah, don't say that five times fast. Um, there's a series here where you can go ahead and learn workflows head to tail, dog pun intended. And, you know, the biggest thing that I will say um, outside of, so let's say you're like, hey, you know, I got the videos, I watched them. But the biggest piece of advice that I can uh, give all of you when it comes to workflows is, 
got to have the buy-in. The buy-in is the number one thing that you're going to have to do. Because if I have a group, if I have an office of six, right, and four of uh, four of the six are really bought into the idea of using workloads, and we're like, hey, we're really heavy red tail users. Well, then you have that two, those two people who are maybe a little bit more sluggish to use it, or they're not necessarily good at completing their activities. What's going to end up happening is your workflow process is going to go ahead and get bottlenecked. So one of the big things that I can recommend is really try to get that buy-in first. Um, and then you're going to want to sit down and start doing that whiteboarding, right? Kind of writing out the process, uh, the step-by-step-by-step, by step by step, or excuse me, didn't mean to say step, the tasks, write out all the tasks and really start writing out everything that you're going to be doing for the process and then kind of putting it into the format that is Redtail. I will tell you, if you watch that first video of conceptualization and it talks about white whiteboarding, that should be enough to get you started. The rest of it is really going to be um, just putting data entry into the CRM. So um, that first part, that conceptualizing and whiteboarding is going to be the hardest part, and that's what we see for most users. Um, so let's go ahead and we got great questions coming. In. I love this. Uh, trying to create an aging into Medicare quick list, but not sure how to go about it. Uh, we need our agents to be able to run a report about six months before their, their client birthday. I don't see an option to set 180 day parameters um, based on the birthday. Yeah. So this is actually a good one. This is a great question. Um, well, they're all great they're questions. They're all great <laughs> questions. Yep. Um, but yeah, so this is a great question. So whenever you're looking for information that maybe a report doesn't handle, it sounds like you might be using our birthday reminder report and there's not 180 day frequency in there. That's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the contact search. So we're going to go to contacts over on the left and advanced search up at the top. And here um, you can start to search for more detailed information. So for example, we're going to use the type here to have contacts who have a date of birth. And it's going to be a little tricky to figure out what date we're going to be searching for. Sure. Um, but I would start with Honestly, what I would probably do is export them to Excel. Excel. So yeah. you would go ahead and take a look at those. I would yeah. say, uh, so you're looking at, so let, let's just double check this. So you're going to see, they want to see six months before the client birthday. If you don't mind, uh, Andre, do you, can you go ahead and just tell me what is the age at which they would go into like your, is it 60? Is it 65? What is it? 65. Okay. So perfect. Okay. So really what you would be looking for is um, kind of a date of birth, um, age actually would be uh, less than 65, yeah, yeah. right? So you would go age less than 65. And greater than 64. And equal to uh, 65, right? And then, and then you would say and? So whenever we use the and, that narrows our search. That's like using a funnel to get more detailed and really drill into those search results yep. and get something that it, it uh, applies to both criteria. So the age is less than or equal to 65. I would say greater than 64, because they just greater oh. than, because um, we don't oh, want to just greater than, yeah, 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 absolutely. Greater than 64. Yeah. And that'll at least narrow down your list some, somewhat. Within to get one you, year yeah. of when, when you're going to be reaching out. Um, then I'm, I'm pretty sure you can maybe start taking a look at date of birth month, right? Would you be able to throw another one in there? Um, we could throw another month in there, absolutely, and start to say, and then their contact birthday, but the, that's not going to, that's going to give them the month of their birthday, not six months before. Mm, okay, uh, so yeah. at least this gets you a little bit closer. And I, I apologize, I mean, there's not necessarily an exact way to go about a, a aging Medicare. Um, but hopefully what you took from it is that if there's a, if there's a report that is not giving you what you need, yeah. start taking a look at the, at the search uh, function, because there's a lot that you can do um, with that. And then what Haley was mentioning was about exporting. So we only have one person that's in that age range of 64 and 65. You can go ahead and start selecting all of the, uh, the options here, and then you can do some sort of bulk uh, uh, export. So you can go ahead and select all the contacts. You can either build a custom export for it, so then you can kind of looking at birth date, um, and then you could do, or you can just, um, yeah, and custom export's probably gonna be best. But again, you're gonna have to build that custom export first and then, then go from there. Yeah, so for more information on running that custom export, I would definitely go back to that question mark. Yep. And when you go to that question mark, go to the Redtail help desk, and then from there, search custom export, and you'll get an article that will help you yeah. walk you through that custom export process. But we definitely want to answer all the questions that we can on today's Perfect. Webinar. Yeah, great. I'm glad that worked out. Awesome. Let's go ahead. Um, so Jason, uh, let's see here. Uh, West Bay, um, okay. Um, this is a, let's actually, let's go back up here. So, so many good questions. Okay. Uh, using Mac and iPhone, what is the best way to sync calendars so I don't have to duplicate items, iCal invites? 
Okay, so I use uh, Mac and iPhone. What is the best way to sync calendars so I don't have to duplicate items? Um, iCal invites sent to clients for meetings and the C CRM calendar. This is a great plug, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, well, what's the best way to sync calendars so I don't have to duplicate? So I'm also on an iPhone. I, I get that. We're all, you know, techie. Um, currently, I, I'd say stay tuned. We have a beta program right now where we're syncing with Outlook 365. So we're piggybacking on a program that already syncs to your phone, and we don't have to then have the CRM information in its entirety leave yep. the system. So I would stay tuned. We've got some announcements coming out um, in April, actually. So Very soon. Yeah, so check on that. If you're interested in getting in the beta sync for the Outlook 365 calendar and contact sync from Redtail to your Outlook email address, your Outlook account, and then subsequently your phone, then reach out to our support team and let them know you want to be part of that Retriever Cloud beta. Retriever Cloud, yep, that's program. the name. And it's it's super awesome. We're going to, it's very soon you're going to be, it'll be released um, hopefully early April um, and then everything, it's going to, it's just going to be awesome. It's going to make anybody, and this goes for anybody who's using the old Retriever, Retriever for desktop, that will be a no more um, and we are just going to be taking a look uh, and using that Retriever Cloud. So it's going to be a lot of awesome, awesome features there. Oh, I like this one. So for activities, is it possible to set the default to all day so we don't have to check that box every time? I am all about reducing clicks. Yep. Oh my gosh, I love this one. So what you're going to do to default your activities to all day, it's actually a preference. You're going to go to your name in the top right-hand corner, and then you're going to click on preferences. Now, what's great about these preferences is I know a lot of my activities are all day, but that's not the case. It's for, not the way I, right? I run. Not yep. the way you operate. He's, yep. You schedule from like 9.03 to 9.12. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is under my activity management section, I'm going to go ahead and default to all day. So that's going to be this option right up here, default to all day events. And we're going to set that to yes, if you do want it to default to all day. If you don't, you're going to set it to no. And then you're going to find one of these green save preferences buttons on this page to go ahead and save that preference going forward. It doesn't matter whichever save preferences you select. Now, keep in mind that if you click on the calendar within a date or a time, it is still going to schedule on that date and time that you're clicking in. So if we could navigate over to the calendar, for example, you have to click in the all day section when you're in week and day view for it to still bring up all day. But if I click at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, for example, it's going to go ahead and schedule an activity for 8 a.m. on Tuesday because it thinks we're trying to to schedule for that time. Yep, that's exactly, I mean, that's really what it is. And I, I, I think that the way that you, you do this, and I don't do a whole lot, <clears throat> I don't use it for my task management as much as more of my, my appointments. And that's yeah. just the way that I run my calendar. Um, but yeah, the all day, I always kind of look at those as those, those tasks, right? The things that I need to get done doesn't mean at 8, 8 a.m., doesn't mean at 11 p.m. It needs to be done at 11 p.m. It's pretty late. 11 a.m., <laughs> excuse me. Um, so we can just go ahead and slap it on our all day and then we can go ahead and execute. So good one there. Um, is there a method to choose a repeating activity by workday or weekday? I have several events that are triggered by the first or last workday or weekday of the month. I don't know. Yeah. So in, in, <laughs> in an activity, let's say coffee with Tony. Yeah. I'm going to make that a regular occurrence. Okay. Because, you know, him and I are good friends. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and click into coffee with Tony. And I'm going to make this repeat on every Wednesday. So we can make it repeat on a workday or a weekday. So what Jonathan's done is he scrolled down to the repeats option at the bottom of the activity, and then we're going to select weekly, and we're going to repeat every one week. I'll meet with them every week. Sure. Or if it's every other week, you're going to do two. If it's every third week, every three, and so on and so forth. And then we're going to choose every Wednesday because it was originally scheduled for a Wednesday. So we're going to click on that Wednesday option, and now it will repeat only on Wednesdays. And then the repeating ends, we can choose a certain date if I'm going to stop having coffee with him at that time, or I can set it to never. It doesn't really matter. Perfect. Yep. So let's go ahead and, hey, there I am again. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So that's, yeah. So if it's repeating, you're all good there. Uh, let's go ahead and take another one. These are awesome. Um, okay. So this is, this is one for me. I'm big, big prospecting, uh, prospector over here. So we have, uh, for marketing purposes, if I send a blast email, is there a way to uh, check clicks using Redtail? 
Unfortunately, you can't check clicks, um, and which is a great, great, I mean, if you're doing a marketing campaign, you definitely want to take a look on who's clicking, not just opens and things like that. Um, you actually aren't able to do that within the CRM. Um, what the only thing that you can take a look at is whether or not it was either sent um, or if, or if it bounced back. So that's about as far as we have as, uh, as deliverables when it comes to those metrics. But there are a number of phenomenal third party uh, partners of ours that focus heavily on the marketing portion. So, you know, MailChimp, Constant Contact, Marketing Pro, FMG Suite. Um, I hope I didn't leave them. There's so many of them. I hope I didn't leave any of those out. Um, but there's a lot of, lot of partners out there that, that are going to really be better for a solution like that. Oh, uh, Snappy Kraken, uh, they're, they're, a, they're awesome as well. Um, so take a look at some third party stuff um, to make sure. Yeah, <laughs> here you go. We still had our um, yeah, we had it open. Might as well, open. right? So uh, yeah, so you can take a look at Snappy Crag, and we said that um, FMG Suite. That's a good one. Um, uh, yeah, Marketing Pro, Marketing Pro, Mailchimp, um, Constant Contact. So those are some better ones to go go about um, what what you guys are, are doing as far as uh, Matt, those mass mailers. So if we don't have that feature, we do integrate with companies that do have that feature. The video of this presentation will be ready. Um, we usually get it up within a week and it's going to be under that training sessions option on the help desk as well. So when, when you click on the training sessions, it's gonna be under recorded webinars. So you can go ahead and you know watch Malcolm over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> So there was just a, a follow up to that, uh, the question. So can we send um, from Redtail directly to MailChimp? Yes. So um, it is just a, it's a list. You're essentially building your list of your contacts within the CRM. Um, and then it's going to be sent over, I believe, from a tag group. So you're going to you can use a quick list to kind of decipher exactly what the criteria is for that for that recipient. You get all those recipients, you put it into a tag group and then you load that tag group into um, the, the MailChimp, and then that, that is where it's going to go ahead and sit. You can send it out through MailChimp. So that's what I would recommend there. Uh, let's give some of the chat some, some love over here. So what do we got? Um, the good news is you can add to a tag group in bulk. That's yep. not something you have to do individually. So you would go to the contacts tab over on the left and run a search for who you're looking for to add to that tag group, and then you can go ahead and add them in bulk. Oh, so the question uh, for Rick, you're looking to, if you're looking to add, um, to do a live training in Ch a Chandler coming into the Chandler office, um, just feel free to reach out to the support team or you can email training at redtailtechnology.com and say, hey, I'm looking, looking to do a Chandler um, in office. And then we'll go ahead and get that over to the, the trainers that are in, in Chandler. Um, we're actually in, um, I guess, sunny, San, uh, sunny Sacramento in our uh, utopia of knowledge. Uh, this is where we do our, our live trainings um, here in the Sacramento office. So um, uh, Arizona has the same. Um, they'll be able to help you out there as well. There was another question on yeah. Outlook. So I know we all think of Outlook as an email program, and it is. It is primarily an email program. Redtail does not have a plugin for Outlook. The, the sync that I mentioned, the Retriever Cloud, is actually only for calendar and contacts. Yeah. So if you're looking to get your emails into Redtail, that's actually a totally different process. Um, actually, I would recommend going to our corporate site, redtailtechnology.com. You're going to make me type. I'm going to make you yeah, type. Yeah, you are. Technology. Sounded <laughs> There we go. <laughs> oh, I guess I could get rid of this. Huh? <laughs> so redtailtechnology.com has a list of all of our products. And this is a great segue into one of our frequently asked questions. What are your other products? Yeah. So we're definitely known for our CRM. But under products, one of our products is email. So we have the option of either hosting or archiving your email address. And then what happens is there's a dynamic link between your contact record in the CRM and all your correspondence with a, an email address for that person. And it's linked into that contact record. I think that this is, and for all the users that I talk with who have it, it's $8 a month to have those emails archived in there, right? So it's every email that is on file within the contact record to the registered email address. So anytime I'm emailing one of these emails, it's going to be pushed into the email history. Every single user I've talked to who has it says it's the best $8 that they spend a month. And it really is because what you can, what it really is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to increase that collaboration, right? If we're all, if we're an office that all works with Tony who, or whether or not we're, you know, he's emailing us or we're emailing out and Haley and I are both kind of working together. 
Haley doesn't want to have to reach out to me to say, hey, what does that email say? What did you say to them? Those types of things. She can go right into the CRM, click on the email history, and she can see what we've, we've been um, you know, talking about. So that's going to be a big value there. So there's a follow-up to the activity question. Um, I apologize. I misunderstood the question. I, we're still in the repeating instance. So the question was actually, how do I repeat on the first Wednesday or the second Thursday? Or the so, last, yeah. Yeah. So in that case, we're going to do monthly. Yeah, that's right. And then in monthly, we're going to say one every one month, unless it's every other month, of course. And then instead of choosing each under repeats monthly, we're actually going to change that to on. And then we're going to choose first Monday, second Tuesday, last Saturday, or, or uh, any of those options. Yeah. So the only important thing here is you have to choose whatever your original activity was scheduled on. So ours is on the March 27th. We're going to want to make sure that March 27th is aligned with the frequency that we, we select down here. Absolutely. Um, yeah. That, and this will prevent you from going on to non-business days, too. Um, so just real quick follow up, uh, Deborah, uh, you asked, um, can, so you cannot send broadcast email unless you have eat red tail imaging, right? That is incorrect. You can, you have access to sending broadcast email or sending an email through the CRM at any given time. Um, definitely check with your broker dealers and make sure that you have that, that, uh, that availability, but really what the email function within the CRM, whether it's a bulk email or an individual email sent to, um, the client through the CRM. Um, that is going to be done through your mail server. So what we're essentially going to go ahead and do, we're going to head up to our pre preferences section. We're going to go into the email uh, within the preferences. We're going to fill out your mail server. So whoever's hosting your mail, put that in there. And then you have the ability to do things like clicking on an, uh, a hyperlink or an email address, and you can send it right from the CRM. You, you can even save it as a note. So th those just so everybody's clear, you do not have to be an email client of ours in order to send an email through the CRM or send a bulk, uh, bulk, a broadcast email, excuse me. And we have a video all about that as well. So if you're- Where is it at? Saying, oh, where is it? <laughs> if you're asking like yourself, oh gosh, I want to learn about this broadcast email feature. That's also going to be under training sessions. And it's just named broadcast email right here in the oh, tutorial. there it is. Look at that. 14 so, minutes. 14 minutes of your day and you'll be all set to go. I'll be in the best 14 minutes you get all day. <laughs> Uh, perfect. So I hope that worked out. So, uh, for client email changes, email, what's the best method of updating the contact record to reflect the change? Um, so this kind of goes back to again, email archiving. So the question is essentially, Hey, my client has gone ahead and changed their email address, but I don't want to, I, you know, how do I go ahead and manage that? So maybe if I have archiving, I'm not losing those past emails. What we have right now, the solution is to just go ahead and Let's say these are the two emails that they have on file. He decides that the Ironman at shield.com is no longer available to him. He doesn't want us to email it. What you can actually do is you want to leave it on the record because that's what causes us to archive those emails. Well, what you can do is you can actually hit the action icon next to the email that you're trying to essentially archive and you can actually edit and you can give it a custom title. So you can say something like old email. And then you just kind of leave it there. Um, it's going to remain on the contact record, but it will say old email. Um, and I know that there's there are suggestions and we are working to try to come up with a better solution there. Um, but I think that this works totally fine for now. Um, so hopefully that answered that. Let's go get into the chat a little bit more. These are good questions. Just to piggyback yeah. on that one, my recommendation for that would also be to change the type to other. That way, when you're exporting their work email address, that you're not getting an old email in that, it would just be best practice to go ahead and move the type to other so that the other is the catch all, whereas your legitimate home and work emails are going to be labeled as home or work emails, even though the custom title displays over the type. All right, so the question is, um, uh, learn best practices on types and categories to set up activities. Um, so this is really going to be based on on, prefer, uh, on on your preferences, excuse me, um, because what it, uh, it's really up to you on how you're going to be setting things up. There are going to be some system defaults. Um, so I think from the activity type, it's like task, phone call, meeting. Um, I think there's one more, and I apologize there. Um, but what it's going to allow you to do is um, I always think of my activity type as the medium in which I'm gonna meet with the client. Um, and then I use my category as the subject. 
Now, the thing about activity category is that it's the same list for note category, workflow category, mail merge category. It's all that same list. So, um, you know, it's up to you on kind of how you set those subjects. You know, if you're really into investment and you do no life insurance or no insurance, you probably wouldn't have a subject of, you know, life insurance planning meeting, right? Um, that is not going to be necessary for you because that's not really what you do. As another tip that I can say, we do on the help desk have a suggested or a sample database list that will allow you to go ahead and not necessarily reinvent the wheel. You can go into the help desk and I believe it's under, uh, is it database lists? Let's see here, that's challenging me now. I believe in you. you I believe it. in me as well. Uh, is this the new, yeah, this is the new one. So if you actually go to how to ta uh, tackle database cleanup and you scroll down to the, nope, I lied. Do you know where it's at? If Ooh. you're looking for that recommended sample database list, you can go ahead and email us at training yeah. at redtailtechnology.com and we can, we can provide it to you as well. Yeah, that's probably a better way because I know it's, it, there's one of the articles that has it posted, so I apologize for not knowing that off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, definitely don't have to reinvent the wheel. Go ahead and take a look at that and use what's going to be best utilized for your office. So this one speaks to you know my organizational yeah. nature here. Sure. Um, what's the best way to clean up activities in bulk? So first of all, the nature of an activity is an outstanding item, right? And sometimes, sometimes we fall behind on our activities. It happens, <laughs> I know. Um, so if that happens, no big deal. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the CRM and we're going to go to the today page and the today page will show us everything that's due today. But what we're looking for is things that have maybe fallen into the back burner. Um, so we're going to go to the activities tab and this will give us a nice little window to go ahead and filter to anything that's past due. So my, my page already filtered to past due, but if you're not seeing that when you first come here, you can actually adjust that filter by choosing filter dates and past due. And what past due means is it was an activity that was scheduled for a day prior to today and has not been completed. And if it hasn't been completed, that means there's no note no on note. that record. History is the name of the game. And <laughs> you wanna say it together? <laughs> if, if it's, it's not, not in red tail, it never happened. happened. So we did that's, not plan that. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be really important for you, right? Because we're talking about history. And so if you aren't documenting, completing those activities, how do we know we actually had that meeting, right? Maybe they canceled. Maybe they didn't show up. Or maybe we forgot about it, right? So we want to make sure that we're completing that. So to complete these, I'm just going to go ahead and yeah. bulk select these. We're Let's just going to say that we did them. But if you're looking to be more specific, you can definitely check certain items or even go individually and use this action icon to complete the items one by one. But to do them all in bulk in one fell swoop, you can bulk select that option and then go to activity options over here on the right hand side to complete those activities. Now, if they're really old, I might recommend to delete them. Yeah, I always kind of think of this like, and I don't have the greatest analogy, but it's kind of like, you know, if a tree falls in the woods, does anybody hear it kind of thing? Like if I haven't seen or touched this activity in years, right? Is that my, is it going to be something that I'm going to be worried about? So um, that's going to be up to you on whether or not you delete it or you complete it. Um, just know that when you complete it, it will be date time and user stamp for the day that you completed it. So that's really one of the big things that you want to make sure that you're doing is completing your activities at the end of every single day. So you look at your calendar, say, I did this, 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 and this, and I complete it. There's nothing wrong with leaving things past due because, hey, it's past due. I want to notify myself. That I did not get this done. That's fine. But it's, again, um, it's up to you on how you want to uh, set that up. Um, let's see here. So there is a question about client uh, annual reviews and how to how to handle them. Um, it is a kind of a larger question. Um, what I would recommend, Nikki, is it to reach out to us. We both have some phenomenal ideas about how to kind of structure um, your client reviews by using the different dates that are available to you, but then running different reports and also using automations and workflows with that. Um, I know that when we've shared that with different users, yeah. it's gone over really, really well. Just um, to get you started sure. though, we can show you preliminarily, there is yeah. a field within the CRM. Um, when we go to, I'm going to use my recently viewed because we were recently on a contact record. Absolutely. We're going to head back over to Tony here and see what he's got set up on his record. So right on the contact record, we've got a next review field here. Now this is a way for you to record and if I click on it, it'll take me straight to it. Um, now if you don't have an extra view there, 
You can also click on the dash that's there when there is no review, or you could head over to know your client on the left to get to that client review. So what this is, is it's a reminder feature, just like a birthday reminder. It's not an activity on the calendar. I call them pre-activity items yep. because there's something that you're going to act on and create an activity to act on. And then this is just essentially the repeating frequency within an activity, which we went through a little bit earlier. And it asks for the first review date. Now, if you've had a client for a long time, I wouldn't worry about figuring out what date they first came in on. Think of this as the last review date. And this can set up a reminder frequency that'll then show on your dashboard, or you can manage it through the search as well. So I just wanted to give you a little taste just to help you get started with that feature. But like Jonathan said, absolutely reach out to us for what you're looking to accomplish specifically, and we can help deeper dive into absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so let's go ahead and hear. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty easy one, which is I like. This is good. This is, this is fun. So we'll go into a contact. I'm actually a little to stay within Tony. Um, actually, no. Let's go into our fearless leader, Rick Redtail. Okay. <laughs> Big shout out to Ricky Redtail. Hope you guys have met him at an RTU or a conference. Um, he's he's the man. Dark overlord of knowledge. <laughs> yes, he is. So to go ahead and add uh, an, uh, an, a keyword to an existing account um, or a existing record, um, real simple. You're just going to go ahead and scroll down to the very bottom. We're going to go ahead and, and, and highlight or click into our keywords and tags. Um, you know, section. Then from there, you're going to see an add button, and then we can just hit add to add, and we can go ahead and just select any keywords that are going to apply to this contact record. Um, and now, if you are not seeing a keyword here, and you're like, hey, I'd love to add a new keyword um, and then apply it to the contact record, that's going to be done through your database lists. So you're going to go to manage your account, and then you're going to go ahead and head into the um, Oh, let's get rid of that. And we'll go into manage database lists. From there, we can go ahead and click into that. And then on the right-hand side, once we are in, you're going to see contacts and you're going to look for keywords. So we'll just go ahead and click into that and then just use that add button in the top uh, top right side, I guess. And then we can go ahead and add that keyword. Then we can go back into the contact record and finish adding that to an existing contact. Uh, let's see here. Do you plan to have the option to feed forms embedded on a website into Redtail in the future for like a lead follow-up type situation? Um, each of the integrations I've checked with said they don't do that. I've contacted a couple of our partners here. Um, so do you plan to have the option to feed forms embedded on a website into Redtail in the future? Um, so we do have forms where you can fill them out on another website and then it'll populate the information in Redtail. And those include Precise FP, Red Capture, and Marketing Pro. So I'm not quite sure what the question is here. Maybe if you could send us a little more information, we can reach out to you individually. And I'm also thinking that she may be looking for like an additional fields that maybe they're not currently tracking. So if there are things that like the CRM does not track, because I know that they are limited to the fields that are within the CRM. And even then, it's not all of the fields like Precise FP, uh, Marketing Pro, and even Red Capture, the ones that you mentioned, those aren't all going to be all the feet, you know, they aren't going to be able to map to every single field within the CRM. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's something that you're looking for is a customization, um, really, I mean, suggest a feature. Um, but outside how of that, they, how do they do that? Oh, great question. Man, we're awful. <laughs> so uh, to, if you ever have a question that you are, you have you ever have a suggestion that you would love for us to take a look at, um, and, and this is a true statement, we definitely look at these on a daily basis. Um, you can actually head into the, the help and resources, and then there's going to be suggest a feature or enhancement. Um, we were built this last week was our 16th birthday. Woohoo! Um, and red we tails, were, not, not yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Um, last week was Red Tail's 16th birthday, and I promise you, we were built from the advice or the uh, you know, and, and suggestions from advisors. So, um, we wouldn't be here without, without you all. So, take time, suggest a feature. And I love what you were saying yesterday. <laughs> Squeaky wheel gets the most oil grease, most grease. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, kind of one of those things that if, if you're yeah. seeing a lot of it and we are, we are seeing it as well. So if it's something that has, 
you know, um, thousands of upvotes, we're trying to make, make it happen um, because we know that you want it. So please don't go to that special, you know, that special <laughs> filing cabinet, that plastic bin with that liner that sits on the floor. That sort of says recycling. <laughs> it says recycling. Yeah. No, these actually go straight to our development team. So yep. they're not going to a support rep. They're not going to someone in mid-level. They're going straight to the developers and they get to review those on a weekly basis or daily basis. Even we're all, yeah. we're constantly viewing them. And we get to see like, gosh, can we implement that feature for our users? Because your success is our success. So let us know. Um, all right. So let's go ahead. And I mean, and there's, I, you know, I don't even know if we're going to be able to get to all of these. I did not expect this to have <laughs> this many questions. I thought we were going to have to go to our frequently asked questions. So um, just real quick, uh, what is the email address for training at Red, Redtail? It's actually training at redtailtechnology.com. Um, so it's pretty much wrote it out right there. Just use that at sign and then add the technology and we are good to go. Um, anytime you want to contact us, it's definitely the question mark and the contact us item up there at the very top. And that will get you to our contact page with our email address and phone number. Or if you're not a phone call person, yep. I get it. Sometimes you just don't want to call. You can submit a help ticket right here through the system as well. And they, they're really quick about turnaround. And even if you have a, 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 you submit a help ticket and it's, we know that it's going to be for training, this, yeah. the support team will actually push it right over to us and then we'll go ahead and answer it. So, yeah. um, so Rick, if you don't want to email us directly, you can always just submit a ticket and we'll go ahead and get it. Now I like this one because this one, a lot of, a lot of users run into this okay. situation. So if you delete, modify, or rename a category type, like a category or activity type, what happens to the old activities and notes saved under the previous category? So it's a couple different questions. If we go into our name, if we go into our name in our managed database list, which is where we work for the keywords, mm -hmm. and you decide, well, maybe you misspelled something, or you decide I want to change meeting to something else or final meeting to, you know, just meeting, then what you can do is actually come in here and edit that category as long as it's one that you've added. Yes. Now, the only exception to that is going to be our system types, and those are appointment, phone call, task, and unassigned. And unassigned just means it does not have an activity type just yet. And just so everybody can see it, it's going to be unassigned right here. Sorry, the, we want you to see us, but <laughs> well, we so know that sometimes it gets covered. When you edit it, when you edit final meeting and change it to meeting, it, it changes it dynamically for all activities that have that activity type. Now, the other scenario is if you come in here and delete that activity type. So that actually doesn't wipe them or, or revert it to anything else. It still will display that it had the activity type of final meeting. The, the only thing that it does is that will no longer be searchable. Yes. So instead of deleting those, contact our support team, click on the question mark, give us a call, or go to the, the submit a help ticket. And let us know, hey, I want final meeting to be mapped to this other item. And then we can go ahead and map it over to another item. Yep. The third option, I know I'm almost done. No, Sorry. no, these are good. This is all good. The third option is maybe it's outdated and you still want to be able to report on it, but you're not quite ready to map it to an existing one. And in that case, you're going to still edit that option and you're going to add the letter Z and then an underscore. Yeah to that item. So what that does is this list sorts alphabetically and it throws it all the way down to the bottom. So it'll be at the very bottom and then you can even do Z underscore outdated yep. just to let everybody know, hey, don't use this anymore. And then it can still remain in your database. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a big and that a lot of that what she had just meant is also gonna be for your your statuses and your categories and things like that. One of the big things that I would re recommend is do not delete statuses and categories right go go ahead and move everything away and once everything there's no no contact attached to that status of the category then you're going to be good to go um, we don't want to have those ghost fields so this one's about red tail imaging so most of our questions have been about the crms this question's about our imaging product imaging is our document storage our paperless solution for anyone that doesn't know and the question is can i preview the document in the browser in imaging? And the answer is not currently, but that's where I would go back to that suggestive feature and definitely let us know that that's in high demand. We've absolutely heard it before, but again, that squeaky wheel. It's, it's the oil or the grease. <laughs> yep. 
Um, all right. So there was a couple of questions about how to, how to contact us. Um, so I'm Jonathan. This is Haley. You can do Jonathan at redtailtechnology.com. You can do Haley at redtailtechnology.com. The other thing that you can do, and this is going to be just as my new plug, um, I'm trying to get new, new uh, Twitter followers. So I'm also Redtail Jonathan at, uh, at, uh, at Redtail Jonathan on Twitter. And you are Redtail Haley. Redtail Haley. Yeah. So there we go. So we kind of have the same, same um, setup there. Um, and actually, the sec- great segue into our uh, w- one of the things that we did want to cover is our social media. So if you guys aren't already following, not just us, um, but if you aren't following the the, the companies, um, the Redtail uh, social media pages, you definitely should because this is where we send out updates, you know, um, about new products or events that are going on. Hopefully, you guys all you know, signed up somehow, right? Maybe it was from our, our Facebook page already. Um, but then we also have the Twitter. And then, um, and then the last one is obviously going to be that LinkedIn. So um, definitely go ahead and um, you know follow us on there. You know we want like to communicate with everybody, and it just kind of helps you stay up to date with what's going on with Redtail. I think we kind of mentioned it, but thank you so much for everyone for joining and these yeah. questions. If we didn't get to your question in this webinar, we're going to reach out to you individually after the webinar to go ahead and answer that. And then if we did mention that we want you to reach back out to us to get additional information. Again, that email address is training at redtailtechnology.com. So other than that, thank you so much for joining us today. We want to, don't want to let this go too long because I know you have so many things to get back to. So um, until next time, we will talk to you then. Um, but yeah, come on, Malcolm. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Take care, everybody. We'll Bye. see you guys next time. Take care. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. Thanks so much for joining us today for this particular session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 800-206-5030, option three for support, or just shoot us an email over to support at redtailtechnology.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.